If you can't live your principles in the bad times, I guess they aren't principles, they're just hobbies. Nice. John Wayne and a tractor have a baby and all you can say is nice. Uh, I'm curious, the character with Steve in mind? I wrote it for him. Did you? And he was the first person that I showed it to when I was done. Uh, he wasn't aware that I was writing it and wasn't aware that I was writing it for him. But uh, when I had finished it, uh, I sent it over to him because I, I knew there were, you know, no one else that I could think of that could pull off a character that had to be inappropriate and uh, unsavory while remaining lovable and, and interesting. You are such a gifted comedian and you have been lucky enough to play with some really talented, incredibly funny people on screen. Um, but I'm curious if it takes time um, for you to kind of figure out the energy of an on-screen partner and how someone like a Steve Carell uh, might approach a material differently and timing differently than like a Kristen Wiig or a Melissa McCarthy. You know, this film was interesting because we had no time. I flew in, I was on set in a matter of hours doing that scene where I lick his face. So it was really baptism by fire on this job and we just dove in. And I'm such a fan of his. I've had such an acting crush on Steve Carell for years. Right. So, and his choices and he remains so mysterious. You know, you don't know much about him and I love that. Uh, I admire that. So I um, I was pretty nervous to be honest. <laughs> okay, so you brought up the licking of the face. Good to see you. Yeah. You look fat. <laughs> is that scripted? What What is the motivation behind that? Why does she do that? an intimidation tactic and it was scripted and I, I felt like I did it for hours I mean you couldn't do that now <laughs> couldn't do that now and I'm just curious if you think it's strangely beneficial that the movie is going to uh, a VOD where a rental would lead itself to an immediate rewatch yeah I think I, I and and I'm suspect when I heard about this I you know and and the you know the quarantining and the COVID kicked in and and um, you know, everybody was worrying, well, what's going to happen to this film? I thought perhaps maybe it'll get more viewers this way. I don't know. But I'm also, I just heard today, it's going to be shown in some of the new drive-ins that are cropping up. So, you know, we'll find a way to get it out there. I hope so. I mean, you always want your movie film to have a life at the cinema, but this, who knows when our life will be what it was three months ago, you know? So I, I think it's, and it's obviously just more important things going on in the world than <laughs> movie releases. So uh, I, I, I'm excited that it'll be coming out on VOD. But I, I think it's intimate in a way that it's going to work, uh, you know, better in a home viewing setting because yeah. you can yeah. absorb a lot of the. It has a lot of nuance to it, and it especially does. everyone's performances. It does, and it's it's a it's a comedy you can read with it. I think. Boy, that's interesting. I, I you know I hadn't thought of it. I, I do hope that there's some pleasure in a second viewing where you kind of can watch the popcorn being laid on the trail and, and see where it was going the whole time. Mm. Um, because that was, I tried to be thoughtful in the way that, that we laid out, you know, what's so important to the film is that you really get engrossed in what you think is where it's going and you're having fun, hopefully that it's funny enough that you're having fun going there until we expand the, the lens and give you more of that, that, landscape macro view and then hopefully you can have a moment of, of consideration of you know why do we allow the system to, to function in the way that it functions tons of press lots of money this seems a bit crazy don't put all the black ones in the center he's running as a moderate for years uh john stewart and the daily show had well, they were our go-to voice for intelligent commentary on both politics and the media and the way that they covered certain things. So this is his specialty. I'm just curious how valuable he was uh, as a resource when you felt like you needed to know more about this culture and the characters that would inhibit this environment. Being really ignorant, I mean, in, in, some, in many respects, politically, I mean, I have my views, but pe people can talk circles around me. But John has, has at his fingertips a, a, a really, obviously real good knowledge and knows how to break down and simplify uh which was really helpful yeah i agree i think he he has a really sort of democratic ability of breaking down intensely complex subjects that are intentionally 
hard to access so that normal people don't understand what's going on and make them sound really simple. Like the sequence of events that leads from this to this is laid out very clearly. So I, I think he just has such a beautiful sort of oratorial skill at, at explaining dense things incredibly uh, concisely. Well, to that end, what were some of the conversations early on about the tone that you guys wanted to strike with this? Because uh, you can look at the trailer and assume that it's going to be one thing, but I think it does a really great job of, of finding humor in what could be cynical situations. Like, it's a real mix of tones. I think there's the, it does feel like the, the, the farm life and Chris and I and that sort of world is truly a million miles away from the scenes that, um, that uh, Rose and Steve inhabit and then slowly our sort of normal sea becomes more and more and more absurd, which is a really nice way of, of like fusing these two very different tones. Guys like me don't know how to talk to guys like you. Do you have a bottle opener? That's a, no, it's just a twist. Oh, twist, 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 twist. Yeah, 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 I know. Maybe he does need a bottle. Maybe use your, Probably. your vest. The running joke of um, Dot always walking in front of Gary as he's in the most lewd positions <laughs> was never not funny. Dot, <laughs> tell you something, Dot's the best. <laughs> the I felt terrible because we were, we were shooting the film as the fall in Wisconsin but it was really late spring and you know outside of Atlanta and poor Dot had to always be in the heavy coat walking by and you know yeah. it was like Dot are you, are you okay is it everything okay 